Well, I'm going to ask a question, and I don't want Florian to answer this. What planet is that? It's Earth, but it's taken from a very unusual angle, which I call the blue point. And you can do this with any globe. You can spin it until you get a, 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 an image of the world where there's no continents, no land masses, apart from New Zealand. <laughs> Have I just... OK, I've stumbled first. <laughs> but the point I'm making here is that our Earth is covered by 71% of its surface by a warm, salty ocean which is the thing that distinguishes us from 10,000 other planets, so the people that study those things say. And it's an ocean which not only gives us food, over a billion people get food from the ocean each day, but it stabilizes our atmosphere and regulates our temperature. Now, I'm going to tell you about a place and a problem, a conundrum and a solution, hopefully within five minutes. Well, the place I want to tell you about is the world's most biologically diverse ecosystem on the planet, coral reefs. That's where I've spent my working career, if you can call it working, working on a coral reef. <laughs> but it is a really amazing place. Over a million species live on coral reefs. One in every four uh, species of marine life in the ocean comes from a coral reef. But what's even more amazing is that this tiny place, that's only 0.1% of the Earth's surface, feeds over 500 million people. So it's small, highly biodiverse, and extremely important to humanity. But unfortunately, like many things in our world, coral reefs are being threatened. And so far, we think we've lost 50% of the coral reefs of the world over the last 50 years. And the problems have been multiple. It's been overfishing. It's been pollution. It's been coastal development. And now it's climate change. And this is a picture which to some people looks very pretty, but to me as a marine scientist, it's a very depressing picture. Because it shows, as far as the eye can see, corals that are sick. And they're sick because they've experienced a heat wave underwater. And this happened in 2006. And over six weeks, we had a two degree increase in sea temperature over the summer maximum temperatures, just lasting for six weeks. And what happened was a beautiful relationship broke up. Corals live with tiny plants, known as zooxanthellae, which are the solar cells of corals. They trap the sun, energy of the sun, and they pass energy to corals. And what happens when corals get stressed like this is that they spit those zooxanthellae out, and corals then don't have their energy source anymore. And so they begin to become diseased and die and so on. Now, this would be OK for two reasons. If it was only once every so often and it wasn't increasing, then we'd be able to go home and say that it's just a, a natural phenomenon. But over the past couple of decades, this phenomenon has been increasing in intensity and frequency, first turning up in 1979, and then in 1998, in a very warm year, wiping out 16% of the world's coral reefs, a rather large number if you think of the analogy to forests, right? What if we woke up one day and you know, found out that in that one year, 16% of the trees of the world had died. And that's, in fact, the equivalent underwater, because that's what drives the fisheries and biodiversity. And so if you ask the climate scientists, and this is really an analogy for anything, overfishing, pollution, everything is showing curves like this. This happens to be the temperature of the Great Barrier Reef uh, going back 100 years and going forward 100 years. And what you see is that temperatures according to the people that really know about these things, are increasing steadily. And they get to a point where that coral bleaching and mortality occurs every year. So you look at this, and then you look at things like what's being lost, and this is really that story in pictures. Again, increasing the temperature and CO2 drives coral reefs from high biodiversity and value to humans to very, very different systems. So you might say, well, OK, can we live with the world without corals? Well, maybe we can, except this is really a bit of a canary for most of the ecosystems on the planet. We might be able to justify that position if it costs a lot to solve the problem. Well, you know how much it costs to solve the problem? To stabilize world temperatures at a level where we could still have coral reefs? Do you know how much that is? How much we'd have to forego? Well, this is the number. This is a number that comes from the United Nations, the IPCC, and it's how much wealth we'd have to forego in terms of GDP growth over the next 50 years 
if we were to take those steps. So it's a tiny amount. It's basically we would get as rich in 51 years as we would have in 50 years. It's like taking one year out of the next 50 years and saying, let's donate um, growth in GDP to the problem. So we're not doing it. So why are we not doing it? Well, I think it's because we're not connected to coral reefs. So I want to take you diving on the reef. That's my strategy. So I had a problem. I had a place, problem, conundrum. And my solution is to take you diving. Now, who dives in this audience? OK, who would like to dive? Well, you know what? It doesn't matter. You could all come diving, because we are launching a site in partnership with Underwater Earth and, and an insurance company called Catlin. It's called the Catlin Seaview Survey, in which we're going to be taking people on virtual diving. And the way it works is we have a Jacques Cousteau-like instrument, which has four cameras on it. Together with Google and Panoramio, we're now stitching three-dimensional 360-degree bubbles. And we're doing this all over the Great Barrier Reef. And next year, we'll start doing it internationally. Now, would this work? Well, in the first week after we launched this earlier this year in Singapore, we had 1.3 million people come diving with us. So I reckon that if we can take people with us on this journey, we'll get the undiscovered onto the desks of the rest of the world, right? We'll, we'll get everybody to understand the problem. And then the young and the wise, I think, will go to work. Thank you. <laughs>